Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm gonna in this clip. I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about three different experiences I have had about hell. It's a bit maybe strange subject to and. Um, if you're a bit sensitive, I recommend that you don't listen to this clip. Um, I'm just gonna start off. Um, the first experience I've uh, told you about in one clip called um, a personal story. I'm gonna tell it one more time. Uh, yeah. In this uh, dream, I, I was in a restaurant that was about to close so it was a you could say a high resolution dream i was i was aware of that uh i was dreaming and i was just sitting there and um, the staff there was just cleaning up and when i was when i looked down at the floor i noticed like a crack in the floor like a like a slit like that but it was uh, completely black so uh, I thought that looked interesting so I bent down and leaned to see a little bit closer and boom I fell in and when I fell in I fell I fell down into a huge you can say it was not a cave but it was like a a huge underground uh, I don't know what to call it it had concrete black walls so to the side maybe 100 meter that way it was one wall and there was one wall on that side one wall behind me and 100 meters in front of me there was another big wall and it was huge ceiling so to say maybe 100 meters up to the roof and um, down there it was like a landfill of old stuff like um, I remember seeing a bicycle and like old trash just really really stuff that was used up uh, what was really profound with this dream is uh, the feeling I had when I drop down in this chamber it was if you have if you have love on one end if you have the la feeling and very beautiful emotions and love and warmth and caring and so on and on the other hand if you have like utter and complete loneliness this i, I never felt that emotion before in my life and it was the more the most horrible emotion and sensation I ever had. So graphically, uh, I was quite used to having these dark dreams. So graphically, it was not so bad, but from an emotional point of view, it was devastating for me. I um, it was just a feeling of. Uh, uh, being totally void of love totally void of you can say God there was no presence of God or love at all and uh, at some point I started to hear some noises behind these walls and when I looked closer it was like a big gate in the middle of the wall like imagine like a 50 or 20 meters up it was this big steel gate and the same thing on the sides and then behind the doors there was like this uh, noise of a pit bull of like some uh, really big dog and um, it was uh, like these hounds were about to be released and when they were released, it was like kind of obvious for me. They when they're gonna come in, they're gonna destroy everything that is inside there. 
So of course before the gates open I woke up. Um, th this, this dream was very profound for me because uh, I understood from that dream that even uh, how bad we think this reality is there is a lot of love in this reality. There's a lot of God presence everywhere in this reality. Uh, just because we don't get that kind of, how to say, reference how it would be if uh, God is not there. That's why we, yeah, we don't feel the difference. It's like when they say for fish, like the fish doesn't understand that it is in the waters because it's always in the waters. And that's what I understood then, that, okay, that's what people say, you don't know, there's cliche terms when people say, yeah, God is everywhere, God is everywhere. That's what I kind of got to hang with, yeah, God is actually, he is everywhere. But he was not in that place, I can tell you. So that was one dream. And the other dream I had was uh, I uh, kind of woke up, or I was in a place it was almost like uh, a, yeah it was definitely underground and it was very dimmed down it was a little bit light here and there so you can see the outlines of people walking around and sitting around in different places it was like these small underground rooms you can say and uh, I was walking around and then I uh, came by this guy who was sitting down. This is pretty gross, so you, you don't have to listen to this if you're too sensitive. And this, this guy was very kind of a cool guy. He was a contemporary dressed, with like kind of a rocky hairstyle and nice clothes and everything. But he was uh, harming himself. He was really, really, he, he was, he had cut himself open with a knife and he was pulling out his own intestines and he was squeezing out excrement. This was uh, really gross. And this was not just, how do I say, this was not just a dream. I remember the smell, like, I remember the smell of everything. I could see the texture of his clothes. I can see his face clearly and his expressions. So for me, this was not just a nightmare. This was, uh, yeah, I never seen a place like it. I never seen a place like it uh, in the movies, not, not with all those details. So for me, after that dream, it was kind of, okay. Uh, yeah, there is this hellish environment. For me, that was clear as day. I understood the... Um, then I had a... I had a third dream. You see... And... Uh, this was like a nightclub, underground, like, but it looked like a regular nightclub. You had the bars, you had the dance floors, there's a lot of people there uh, getting, like, I think this would be considered a good nightclub. Like, it was a lot of people there dancing and partying and drinking quite a lot. Not like totally wasted, but like quite drunk and they were taking drugs and it was a promiscuous place yeah, people were out there to get laid and uh, so everything uh, like looked quite normal from start so to say but then uh, I uh, I saw this one girl who was just uh, she was uh, quite close to me going around and she was uh, quite drunk and uh, she was uh, like um, flirting with this guy so nothing strange this is like an ordinary scene from a 
from any city. But then at some point it was like when she decided that they were going to have sex. Boom. It was like, uh, then I understood, wow, this is not an ordinary nightclub. So this place was like a big testing ground for testing out souls. It was like, um, uh, yeah, so when she took that decision, instantly the, 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 how to say, the guards came in and just snatched her from the place. And so I followed them out. I was just wondering what's going on. Like for me, it was just so. I was following them, and in, in, in right next to this place was a prison. So wall to wall was a nightclub, and then behind there was a prison. And when you came to the prison, it was like first you had the, the um, entry to the prison, and then you had like an, a gate, and that behind that gate and bars, it was like bars, was the the cells. And I could hear like screams from female screams from those cells. And uh, what happened was that this then this uh, girl was being punished in those cells. So this is like a scene, you know. You know, many some people talking about this when it comes to hell. It was like it's like punishment for different things. And. I'm not going to tell you about all the details. It would just it would just gross you out. I could I could feel the smell. I could feel the smell of uh, rotten so to say rotten skin, rotten tissue. There was blood on the walls. And uh, the this girl she was like being killed and then she was how to say alive again and then it was just repetitive uh, yeah and I remember thinking I couldn't I couldn't get it like for me it was like what a harsh punishment for that I just couldn't I couldn't get it like uh, how uh, why was her crime so severe I didn't uh, get that at the time. But then, yeah, we... <laughs> I think that's the... That's one of the problems today. We, we don't really... We don't know where we are. We don't have any good reference. You know, imagine... A, imagine any kind of group of people that have been alone by themselves for a long time when they start creating their own habits they will just they can just drift away and their norm can become uh, very very extreme but they will not think it's extreme for them it is normal and that is what has happened to us that is exactly what has happened to us that is what i understand today and this is connected to this dream. Say, uh, you have the saying from the Bible. It says something like, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Well, one of the reason I'm telling this is I'm, I'm thinking I was thinking about in terms of imagining we are preparing for a race and I'm thinking I'm gonna run tomorrow but I'm thinking I'm gonna run for let's say three kilometers that's the race that's what I believe it's the race but when I come to that place tomorrow and I'm supposed to run it turns out that I need to run 80 kilometers so I'm not prepared at all for what is coming. So for, for, for me, when I come to that place tomorrow, it's going to come as a shock and I'm going to be overwhelmed 
but they tell me that I'm I, I yeah you know I need to run for eighty kilometers. What kind of shoes do you have? And this is this is what's going on with us right now. We have been tricked and fooled by all of this nonsense talk. We have been tricked and fooled that we are good. Like, yeah, we are good. Yeah, as long as you're not an asshole, yeah, it's fine. It's really not good enough. We really, we really don't know what is expected from us. And we've been fooling ourselves, you know. We've been fooling ourselves all the time. So you're tapping each other's back. I'll tap your back. You keep your sins. You tap mine back and I keep my sins. And we don't offend each other. Like, don't tell about, don't say about anything that is wrong to do. And then it becomes very sensitive. Don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. That's, that's what you hear all the time, right? <laughs> like, but it's in the wrong, totally wrong context. Like, if you see somebody doing something wrong, uh, just shut up, don't say anything. Don't tell them. Don't judge them. Who are you to judge? How do you know what's right, what's wrong? Right. That's the that's the kind of fluffy kind of mentality that's being spread out right now. And that that is exactly why I'm doing this video as a medicine against that. We we have we are every each and every one of us. We're gonna meet our creator. We're gonna meet him. But most of us are not prepared for it. How are we gonna meet him? Living the lives that we uh, we are living. So it will come. It will come as a complete shock for us. And we need. To f we will find out that we needed to run eighty kilometers and not three. So complete something completely different was expected from us. But we thought what we were doing were was okay because everybody else told us so. But we didn't spend any time reading up. How much time did we spend on reading up? Oh. So even if you if you you don't believe but just common sense you, you have in many different religions you have the so called uh, definition of sins and or deadly sins it's, that's just not from one tradition many traditions The thing is that uh, we, everybody that's born here, we are born with this sin. It's like, it's not, yeah, everybody has it. But that's why uh, there is this one way out. But that means that we need to humble ourselves. That means that uh, yeah, we won't make it if we are proud. But if we are uh, humble enough to say, and ju to just look at ourselves and say, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. That's what we need to do. And we need to. There's only one that we can turn to, and that's Jesus Christ. 